All right, thanks for coming back. After that technical glitch, we're figuring it out. And um, thank you, Nancy, Ian, Rima. Oh, hi, Auntie. Orville, awesome. See a bunch of people have joined. Uh, again, we're, we're going to be talking to Srinath, who is a drummer and a writer, and he's put together this Sunday's soundtrack, which is available in the link in our bio. And there's some really awesome songs on there, so I'm excited to listen to it. Hi, Diane. <laughs> Aha, I see Srinath. He is an elusive particle. But I see him here. This Instagram live business is, is amazing. All right, there we go. I deeply hope this works this time. Hey. Is it working? Hi, Srinath. Yes, ah, it's working. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry was... for keeping you waiting. Sorry for keeping all the viewers waiting, but I'm glad it's working finally. <laughs> yes, welcome. Hi, Srinath. Hi, I'm Mira. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Two nice. thumbs up. <laughs> all right. All right. Great. Yes, it took a while to get ourselves here, but I think I was doing a decent job stalling. I don't think so, but... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're here to talk about uh, everyone who is joining. This is uh, Srinath and he's a drummer, he's a writer, he is everything in between. He's an educator, he does basically just anything cool and creative um, as well as, you know, just teaching and, and learning at all times. So we're going to be, I'm not going to give away too much, but we'll reveal his, his story and his, um, you know, just kind of the background and everything as we, uh, as we converse, as we talk. So, um, and the reason why we're here, this is our Sunday soundtrack interview. So he's made this really great playlist for us to, to fill our Sunday with, uh, which is in the link in our bio. So you can check it out. Uh, you can check it out as we're kind of talking through it. And uh, I wanted to kind of just open it up now. Srinath, if you want to share some of the songs that you uh, added on the list and you know, we could just jump in. I think it's a really interesting list. I, I had a lot of fun listening to it. Thank you so much, Meera. So yeah. uh, the idea behind starting this series itself at the Academy was, uh, you know, to have people curate some music so that uh, they have something fresh to listen to every week, you know. And uh, we've been doing it for the past uh, 21 editions now, and this is the 22nd one, and the mantle came to me. Now you've been interviewing people. Now it's time for you to get interviewed and <laughs> you to share what kind of music you love. So uh, all the music in this playlist is the music I grew up listening to or something that, that I listened to and that has stayed with me ever since. It's the music I still listen to when I go back home and I'm cooking and things like that. But uh, something about the choice of songs. So I've written a little couplet that describes uh, the choice of this song. So I'd like to share that and then we speak about the song. So this, is in, so this is in Hindi. It goes, Ek geet ki dekho, ruh anukhi. Ek geet ki dekho, ruh anukhi. Aadha ye saaz hai, aadha ye alfaz hai. Ek geet ki dekho, ruh anukhi. Aadha ye saaz hai, aadha alfaz hai. Tum hi bhala, batao bhala mujhe. Saaz bina alfaz kya hai? Or alfazo bina saaz kya hai? Which translates to a, a song has a unique soul, a spirit. Half of it is melody and half of it is words. Now you tell me, my friend, what are words without a timeless melody? You tell me, my friend, what's a melody without, ti without timeless words? That's beautiful, so, beautiful, Srinath. So, so it's uh, just a way of putting that, you know, words matter as much as the melodies and melodies matter as much as the lyrics. And... The hallmark of a good song, in my opinion, is even if you forget the lyrics, the melody kind of stays in your head. And 
if you forget the melody, the lyrics stay still stay in your head. So these are those songs in which either case is true. If I forget the melody, the words are still relevant. If the words I forget, the melody is still relevant. Uh, so there's a lot of emphasis on the lyrics of these songs that are put together. Some of my favorite lyricists, right from uh, Bulesha to uh, Prasun Joshi to Gulzar to Javed Akhtar uh, and uh, everyone in between that realm. Uh, and most of these songs are in Hindi. I, the, uh, the, the reason I chose these songs in Hindi was because we had so many series and absolutely beautiful music throughout, but uh, we didn't have as much music in Hindi. And uh, yeah. I mean, all of us, we grew up listening to Hindi songs. I thought, okay, let me have uh, this spice in our Belpuri of songs <laughs> to have a different flavor. So uh, this, uh, there are a few uh, honorable mentions with, the, uh, with regard to the lyrics. That like I'd like to point. There are about 16 songs, but there are a few lyrics that really speak a lot to me. So I want to share a little bit about that. For example, the very first song in the playlist is Rehna Tu from the movie mm. Delhi Six, and Prasun Joshi, Joshi is the lyricist. And there's just one line in this song that just you know I was spellbound by the, those words. And uh, he writes about some form of companionship, and he says, "Hat ham chalna ho, to dono ke daayat sang kaise." If you wish to walk hand in hand, how can both how your right hands be together? Ah. So uh, it's, it's so simple, but so profound, right? And it, it is just as relevant even out of the context of the song. Uh, uh, the, the next song, for example, which is penned by Javed Akhtar Sab, uh, it's, it's from my, one of my favorite music, uh, movies, Swades. And beautiful oh. lyrics, like, Yuhi chala chal rahi, jeevan gaadi hai samay pahiya. आंसू की नदियां भी है खुशियों की बगिया भी है रास्ता सब तेरा तके भैया सो ब्यूटीफुल एंड इन दिस ट्यून एट द एंड ही सेज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रोफाउंड लाइन इट्स अबाउट फॉलोइंग योर हार्ट एंड द वे जावेद साहब राइट इट राइट इज हर पल की सीप से मोती ही तू चुने जो तू सदा सुने अपने मन की लाइक फ्रॉम द ऑयस्टर ऑफ एवरी मोमेंट यूल ओनली गेट पर्ल्स if you always listen to your heart lovely so even, uh, even if like even yeah. even without the even without the music it just sounds like you know it just sounds like something that you would offer a piece of advice to a friend let's so you know and uh, yeah. then that would you can kind of just stay stay in your mind forever that's yeah, nice the, and these songs become your friends over time because of the same reason and we, when you need some form of guidance these hidden lines in the song which might not be even the first or second stanza it might be at the very end which mm. you might have missed out altogether but then they come back to you and they say you know this is the right time for you to listen to it and then it makes yeah. <laughs> all the sense in the world so there are songs like this uh, which many of uh, the listeners might have heard already but what i would implore them to you know listen them anew and listen them with the words in mind and something much more beautiful will emerge from this bouquet of songs that we have for you uh yeah most songs in hindi just just one in spanish uh, and there's one more lyric that i would like to share at the very end of our interview because it's so profound that i want people to kind of listen to that and then carry on with their lives but yeah the focus was lyrics have something in hindi and kind of chronicle the the rich heritage of writing we have in these songs that we sometimes don't pay attention to but they are beautiful just by themselves and in the context of the song subhanallah <laughs> yeah and you don't realize i think since you think of these songs even as i was listening to these songs i'm like oh yeah these are just the songs that are intensely intense, intensely nostalgic because we listened to them at a time when we were kind of young and we we heard them as kind of you know like yeah it's our parents are listening to this so we're listening to this and we're jamming to this but when you listen to them right now it's a totally different context because you hear it with all of this other like musical knowledge and like poet you know like you hear it yeah. with different experiences and it was so it was so cool to listen to those songs now you know after having lived a little bit more um yeah super cool super cool Thank and you. i wanted to ask also about um the uh the 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 fact that you kind of picked hindi songs or the fact that you picked of songs like this and this is where 
you kind of maybe started, is this where you started like falling in love with music or being interested in music? And then how does that now translate to you play really different music and you teach really different um, genre, a really different genre of music than this. So has, has there been any kind of carryover from there to here? Uh, wow, that's a fantastic song. Uh, a fantastic <laughs> question. Um, uh, well, it might turn into a song. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how does all, listening to all this music translate to the way I play and teach something, something on yeah. those lines? Yeah, even though okay. you're not necessarily playing that genre, you know, do you feel like you have something that carried over? Like, you know, I, I don't know. Okay. Keep it open, so the, but... so the music I grew up listening to had a lot of emphasis on the melody and the lyrics. Right. And we come from a tradition of, you know, everyone is a singer. When there's an antakshri, everyone sings. No one cares who's in tune, who's not in tune. Right. So inherently, culturally, we grow, grow up with these songs with an ear for melody, with an ear for the lyric. So even when I started to play, say, Western music or lyrics in English, for example, I still would try to hear the lyrics, you know, what, what is actually being conveyed in the song. Uh, and... Uh, that was something that people liked too, especially singers. Okay, when I when I go to a gig and ask, okay, where are the lyrics? And they were like, why do you need the lyrics? And then they thought, okay, yeah. maybe he does. <laughs> so that helped. So uh, having a uh, ear for melody and the lyric has, you know, translated even in this realm. And uh, it, especially when I play uh, jazz or any form of improvised music where there is not uh, any lyric involved or not a singer involved then I see it as an opportunity to be even more melodic because now you don't have a melodic in, like voice or you don't have any lyric. Mm. So you better mean something with whatever you're adding. It's added responsibility <laughs> in a sense. That's true. Uh, but yeah, I, I, feel like, I, I feel deeply rooted uh, with the music that I grew up with and it has certainly helped me have a more melodic ear. And even the way I play drums, I try to make some form of melody as I play. Uh, I think that all comes from the, the music I grew up with, even though uh, it's in the jazz uh, tradition or jazz realm, so to say. But I, I trace it back to the music I grew up with. So certainly it matters a lot. Secondly, since you also mentioned education, see, some, each beginner is different. Everyone has heard some different music. Everyone fell, the song people uh, fell in love with music is different for different people. Our job as teachers is to identify that and where they're coming from so that we can enable them to, you know, reach their musical goals, but not derailing, you know, the train that has already arrived. So uh, mm -hmm. since I realized that, you know, where I come from matters so much to the way I play, I, I kind of uh, have the openness to accept it for other students as well who come to me. And I always encourage them, okay, what did you grow up listening to? Oh, metal, great. You know, or oh, jazz, great. Or rock and roll, great. Reggae, no problem. Yeah, not having that thing that, oh, since we're learning jazz, you only learn through the idiom of jazz. Yeah, that's really cool, you know. Or since we're learning rock, we're only going to learn from this, you know from this thing. That's, that's super, that's super cool. I, I heard that you do that, you know, you kind of use, use everyone's own background as their, like you, you've spoken about this, you know, use, use everyone's own background as their um, like starting point. That's really cool. I really liked the, what you said about that, the train. I, I'll have to kind of, <laughs> Anika, you should keep transcribing these quotes. She's kind of transcribing some of your quotes <laughs> to the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Live transcription. Anika um, is one of my Anika favorite students a, here. <laughs> yeah, she's a lovely singer-songwriter herself. So she had a question, actually, what is your comfort song? I don't know if she meant on the playlist, um, uh, but maybe you can say, what is there, is there one of the songs on the playlist is your comfort song? On the playlist, there's this song uh, composed by one of my favorite, favorite music composers, Vishal Pardwaj. And the words by Gulzar again, one of my favorite. And this tune is called Jagja, uh, by the film in uh, in the film Omkara. And it it is just a lullaby for me. I mean, that's that's the best lullaby I could find in all these years. 
and even the words are so beautiful actually it's a very sad song if you look at it in the context of a movie but even the words are just profound there's one line that goes that there's some there's someone who's sleeping for example and you're asking them to wake up ek jag ja and uh, the singer says jo chahe le lo dasharath ka vaada aankhon se kholo ji rehna so dasharath ka vaada is like it's, it's one of the staunchest vows that anyone can take father of ram mm-hmm. who you know because of he had given a vow to one of his wives he had to send uh, ram to, to lanka for 14 years which can be so difficult for a father to do but he kept that vow so the person who is trying to wake up the other person he said if you want you take you, you can take that vow from me you know to chahiye ul tum dashrath ka vada but please open your eyes and open the morning along with it so mm. there's such beautiful historical context as well and it conveys the meaning i mean it's so lyrical <laughs> i'm spell spellbound when i hear such things so yeah it is one of my comfort songs but equally beautiful lyrics too nice lovely lovely yeah oh, such a beautiful song i mean it it like hit you it hit me even when it, when it was in the playlist you know mm-hmm. like just randomly came in and just sapped all of that emotion <laughs> um, but good okay cuz i actually had another question um in addition to and we talked about a lot of music and we've been mm. talking about a lot of music but you also mm. are a writer and you've written a, a a book and published a book um which is called pedals and perspectives right and if you want to talk a little bit about that um i i myself am a big fan of the book because it like just takes you away on this journey the book is about a journey about shrinath's journey and you know as you're reading the book you're kind of getting these little anecdotes and stories and it feels like now okay i've read the book even i've been on this journey you know <laughs> so it's really <laughs> it's really cool i think as every every person reads this book they're like okay yeah they're like joining along on this on this nice journey so i wanted mm. to ask how that journey began and how the writing process was um you know was for you because all your life you've kind of been in maybe this music um musical creative process and then kind of mm. shifting those techniques mm. to mm. writing you know mm. that must uh, be interesting Trip, uh, trip all the way from thailand and i went to nepal bhutan to ladakh and all over india and until the south in kerala it took 8 months 8 hours of bike bicycling every day maybe close to 15000 kilometers of riding meeting the most amazing people there are and finding so much generosity in the common people uh, it it made me each day was a new story for me and uh, i've always i'm i'm one of those persons who likes to note things down if i find something interesting there are times when i'm walking and i find a good metaphor or something and i actually stop and write it down and then go and this is in daily life and when you are on such a different dimension when you're traveling like this uh you find these uh, moments where you just want to sit down and jot down things of that of offer you so much beauty and perspectives to think and broaden your uh, world view so i was doing that throughout uh, as a, um, initially it was just few lines here and there here and there and then as a way of chronicling my journey and also sharing it with my family who was gracious enough to let me go on this crazy journey i started writing a blog at every day what happened and there used to be some insight in there not because i wanted it to be insightful but the nature of journey itself brought forth such perspectives and mm. i kept writing for the, that eight month duration and when i came back i thought you know this can't just stay in one corner of the cyber world so to say it, it has to come out <laughs> yeah so uh, how i thought of it like why should i write a book the question came to me as well and then i realized you know when a fa- when a flower find discovers fragrance it chooses to open up and share it so i thought okay i found this fragrance it's not mine but it's out there and i have it in my bud form now i have to open up and share it and that was the motivation and i thought okay let me share it so that's how i started converting all these stories in in, uh, in a book format there are 34 short stories that speak about what perspectives can you gain if you just set out on a bicycle 
and no plan and what happens and what could you learn what can you bring back it's all about mm-hmm. those things and the writing process it took a long time actually i was inspired to travel by another friend of mine uh, we met in oroville and uh, uh, her name is marine and she uh, encouraged me okay why don't you travel too when i said i don't have the means to travel uh, like a you know i don't have the means to travel and then gradually the conversation never stopped and then i had to go on a bicycle <laughs> so i had to find a way to do that and then once i finished my travel i said okay i've traveled and i've come I've come back with these stories now you ask me to travel now I, i ask you what do i do with these stories and she, and she's an illustrator she said okay i'll illustrate and she's a book designer i'll design the book let's put this out so we took this uh, up as a project and as a collaborative project and we did everything from scratch like from uh, writing multiple rounds of editing where many friends helped including you <laughs> uh, uh, and her totally self published so it looks like a proper book you can't tell it's it's not a self published yeah. uh, body of work and uh, editing typesetting promotions distribution everything has been taken care of in house and part of that uh, courage now that i look back in hindsight when i was doing that i didn't think it like think of it like that but part of it came from the journey itself which was uh, which came from some seed of courage so i thought if i can do that this is this stakes are too low for this so that's the desire to write was mainly to share these stories with people and share something that you know they might not be able to travel like this but there's something out there that i can bring back and we can all share as stories Right, uh, right. someone asked someone asked in the comments what's the name of the book the name of the book is pedals and perspectives it's the the perspectives you gain as you pedal that's the idea anika also has asked a few questions actually one of them leads to my next other question hmm. um but uh she was asking what do you miss about i think being a traveler she was asking something like that So I wanted to ask a little bit of a broad question which I think a lot of us would be interested in knowing is that so you have these you know these big chunks of these big life changing experiences maybe and then you have you know chunks where you have to stay in one place and you have you know other things going on you're teaching you're playing you're mm. you know so how do you how do you keep that uh, that flower bud feeling right happening mm. throughout are there ways that you intentionally do that or are there ways that you yeah. you know kind of seek out seek out those maybe mini mini experiences like that to keep the ball rolling or you know what what do you what do you usually do for that hmm great question and i i i struggle with it too i i'll be honest it's is difficult to you know be so free on the road and not a care in the world and now you're mm. uh, actually in the quote on quote real world where you are at one place you have a job and you have a home and things like that mm. but I also feel that when when I was out on those and on that journey most of the people I met who changed my perspective or changed my life were leading normal lives yeah that's true <laughs> right but with one good interaction they did change my life so everyone else who I am meeting right now maybe I'm kind of relatively stationary in my life but I have the opportunity to change their life however brief the interaction might be. That's so uh, that's a lovely thought. <laughs> so nice uh, so the ta- the dummy the tables has flipped kind of. And uh, imagine like you are an educator too like how how big an opportunity do we have to change someone's life? If yeah, there's a yeah. student who's hungry to learn and you can help them in the way that help they know that's best for them. You know that's a transformation you bring about too. So <laughs> it can be seen as a way of reconciling with how life is going on right now but you know whatever helps us find solace and somebody's life gets better in the process <laughs> that's true that's true that's so lovely yeah you don't think of you know kind of have using your place in in your own world as that you know as that inspiration as that spark and you know that's so lovely yeah shrinath has changed you've changed my perspective a lot too yeah as anika was saying that you know mm-hmm. um Thanks Anika. Awesome. Okay, wait. Actually Anika had a few other questions which I'll quickly answer the kind of fun uh to be interesting. If you could get if you could get a lyric tattooed, what would it be? Lyric tattooed. One lyric on yeah, lyric tattooed on you. She okay. Didn't, she didn't specify a tattooed on who, but I'm assuming on yourself. 
Okay. Is there one one yeah. So uh, last lock in last lockdown I read the entire Bhagavad Gita and uh, you know oh. right wrote down everything wrote down the meaning tried to learn Sanskrit all of that and of all the lyrics that I love there's this one couplet that I really 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 like and if I could have <laughs> get a tattoo it would be a couplet from the, that uh it it says if i remember it correctly uddhare tatman atmanam na atmanam avsadaye atmai va atmano bandhu atmai vari puratmana it it says that uplift your soul don't let it degrade because the soul is the best enemy of the soul and the soul is the worst enemy of the soul too so so in a way it gives the responsibility to you right yeah you have this soul you can make the best out of it you can make the worst out of it so it 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 kind of gives you this sense of agency okay now you know uh, get your act together and act uh, as seva as service with with utmost kindness that's how that's my interpretation of it and that's something that i feel that i need to keep reminding myself and you know there is this one incredible chance to live and you know, better uh, make the best out of it so that you know there is more samriddhi or wellness prosperity around you so yeah if that counts as a lyric that's what i would get that <laughs> yeah i think it definitely does definitely does i think just words in general that you want to again like you want to keep as reminders around you you know that's a it is a it's a lovely thing and i think it is it's like necessary right now for since we are very self um you know self run right now mm-hmm. like in this time so it, it agency is a difficult thing to to muster sometimes right now you know since usually you you have a lot of you have your community around you physically and you have people kind of pushing you up or, mm-hmm. or even pushing you down sometimes you know but the, you don't have <laughs> either right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh so it's lovely that's lovely okay um Yeah so I had that was one one big question um I wanted to uh, I'll ask Anika's other question also hmm. do you have if anyone else has questions that they want to ask for you they can put it in the chat as well I mean in the question yeah, part please. so Anika was asking do you have a favorite lyric that's in in English It's hard to hard to remember off the top yeah yeah no that's okay if you have anything I I don't remember the lyric but I was recently recently uh, studying lyrics by Sting and there's this song called Russians I just read it yesterday that we were preparing for the lyric writing workshop uh, that's happening soon so that's that that's one of those lyrics that I can think on the top of my mind that really is profound and poetic in all of its sense and I haven't even heard the song yet but I oh, wow. but that's that that's one lyric that is really beautiful so if you want to check out Russians by Sting It's a lovely tune. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. That's lovely. Actually, someone was asking um, about the book quickly. Get where can you get the book? Uh, you can get it on my website. Just Google "Pedals and Perspective" Srinath S R W N A T H. It will lead you to my website, and you can get it safely from there. You will get it with a signed copy with a nice postcard. Okay. So. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So, do you want to talk a little? Take a second since you mentioned the lyric workshop. Do you want to mention uh, a little bit of what we're doing, what we're starting this weekend? Okay. So, uh, broadly speaking, at the Goa Jazz Academy, what we try to do is bring out experiences for people that we wish we had when we began, we started. So, uh, having been to music school too, I, and uh, being interested in writing, I discovered that there was no. course out there or even in my course that that kind of guided people how to write better or how to learn from someone who is who writes better than you maybe artist that already write so i thought okay this is something that needs to be addressed in the education space you know there should be some form of guidance that helps people reach their best writing the sooner in their careers um and yeah our, the, it, it is our commitment to find these voids and you know help people get this resource as an education in an accessible affordable and uh, you know equally academic and while being equally academically rigorous in the process so uh, i 
I had this idea and who did I call right when I had this idea? Meera, because she is a fantastic uh, poet, writer and songwriter. So I thought, okay, Meera, I think we can help people if we put something like this together. And as she has never said no to one of these late night calls that I <laughs> placed to her and say, okay, let's do this. So that's how the idea... Turn out to be, so they always turn out to be such fun ideas. <laughs> I know when Srinath sends a message saying, Meera, I have an idea. Then I'm like, yes, okay. <laughs> what will yes. it be this time? <laughs> so glad, uh, gladly, you know, you also agreed. And we put together this nice five-session five workshop that helps us write better, have, you know, be able to access more creative metaphors and uh, how, to, how to write with partners, how to change the lyric, how to have more ways of approaching the same topic, more ways of approaching the same word. You know, using multilingualism, we are inherently multilingual. All of us Indians at least speak two languages, if not more. So how to use that? You know, maybe something can be gained, gained in translation instead of al always being lost in translation. Lost. So uh, we come up, we, we brainstormed a lot and, you know, we came up with these five, uh, five lessons that, five, that this workshop consists of that can help people at least channelize their thoughts a little better so that they can distill the best of the thoughts uh, they have during the course of their lives. And uh, yeah, do you want to say something about the workshop since you are... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just thought it would be interesting the, the beginning of it because the beginning, it was, I was so surprised that you came to me with this lyric workshop. Because just in general, you know, I would, you have this preconception as, oh yes, drummers are in this small box, singers are in this small box, right? But every time Srinath always breaks this mold. So why was I surprised? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I was really excited to uh, initially hear the, the idea. And I think as everything, as it always happens, when you're, when you're planning for a workshop like this, you have so many ideas yourself that you're, okay, I want to try this in my own practice, you know? So I think these are the, the things that we brainstorm, the things that we have, you know, like taken from other people and I mean, like taken from yeah. other resources and um, kind of put everything in one place. I think it's a really kind of comprehensive um, uh, like list of things that will really kind of help whoever is, whoever is in a rut or whoever is kind of struggling with that maybe one little, little uh, thing that's stopping them from just going for it, you know being a being a songwriter or being a lyricist or whatever they um you know whatever they want i think we've covered all of the the little the little friction you know that goes through that so i think what we want or what i'm really hoping for is that people will just kind of go over whatever ruts or whatever bumps that they are facing and just be able to kind of write a little bit more freely and a little bit more genuinely you know mm. Yeah, and the exciting thing about this workshop is that it's totally activity based and we are all, like yeah. we as facilitators are also going to participate in it. So we don't know what's going to come out of this, which is the beauty of it. You, you don't know. Yeah. So uh, being equal participants and facilitators in this workshop, you know, adds that element of freshness to it. You know, this, there are there's plenty of gifts, gifts that we are moving towards as the days pass. The workshop starts tomorrow uh, and we yeah. are super excited to host it and hopefully host many more make it a series totally so and it's not going to be yeah like it's not going to be a lecture you know that's that's what i'm super excited about that every small activity we're doing is going to lead to the next activity itself you know so just kind of getting pen on paper and keeping that pen on paper for like an hour is is something that that'll help you know that's lovely super okay super. yeah okay i wanted to i had one more uh, question that i think i might have lost and might have gotten lost um in between of, of everything but nikhil, i think i just yeah nikhil had yeah, asked nikhil. a question can we expect a second book from you if yes <laughs> what will it be about yes yes do you want well, to ask that first my my goal in life is to write one book a year at least <laughs> so uh, the approach i follow is i write little by little every day and Sometimes it goes in the direction of an essay, sometimes a poem, either in English or in Hindi, or I write short stories. So currently I'm working on a series of short stories that I hope to release next mid next year. That's what's on the cards. The following year I want to re release a collection of poetry. And the year after that, hopefully I write a travelogue again. 
for that which i had to travel <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's that's some that's that's something that's cooking in my mind right now but next year there's a collection of short stories coming out that's great that's great uh, is it a, a themed collection of th- short stories or is it general no no it's it's uh, as the stories come okay okay as we get them shrinath also has a a ongoing kind of a, what do i call it a newsletter maybe so if anyone is interested in in joining that newsletter i don't know if it's it's I'm on the website kind of if, if you go to on the if website. you go to my it's shrinathsrinivasan.com if you go to my instagram bio it's 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 that's the link in my bio so it's really easy to find in case you want to check out my other work my writing story essays or my book pedals and perspectives it's all there also a link to subscribe to the newsletter uh, i'll 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 send good good stuff towards you promise if you yeah subscribe. so i i was going to say if you don't want to wait for that whole show uh, for the book to be released he, he does constantly kind of send out bursts of poetry and lyrics which you know every morning and uh, not every morning but when when Once a week. the mornings the mornings that you send it out it's like oh this is nice this is lovely it's a nice like burst and and sometimes you know i i also like to write uh i don't think i always send them to you but i i like to write like responses to them and then the, the, mm. it's like a little writing prompt in and in and of itself you know when you get poetry <laughs> from someone you feel like oh even i should kind of write mm. so it's a nice thing it's a nice thing okay well, i wanted to ask a little bit about your journey into being a a, a drummer and to being a musician um yeah. uh and generally kind of into music you know into being a full time musician so that was interesting if you had any um you know maybe like since some of your students are here i think they would like to hear also okay i am a totally accidental musician i mean there's no musical lineage <laughs> before me as far as i can trace and it's a funny story actually uh i did not be someone who was standing in the line in during assembly you know in school when you have assembly there's uh, the music party that's on the stage and the rest of the kids on the line and i was quite short even at i mean i still am but that time it was i'm really short and i was second person in the line and the person in front of me was gaining height like he hit puberty and he was gaining height so quickly <laughs> i thought okay i better do something so i thought the best option is to start playing the simplest form of musical instrument that i can manage so i started with the triangle no simplest you just strike it there's nothing to do and uh, you know i'm like okay now i'm not in the line anymore and then i learned a little bit of tambourine a little bit of congo drums just by watching and uh, until i passed out like i graduated from school uh, there was not so much music apart from this like in the morning you do the prayer you do the national anthem and all of that after that is when i thought okay let me take it to the next level as a recreation nothing more i never had the aspirations of being a musician in any form and i started learning myself uh, and uh, i was studying engineering simultaneously so both of the things were going on and once i finished engineering um, there was this new music school uh, sam that had come up and some of my friends from my town had gone and uh, they had good things to say about it so i said i asked my parents uh, can i go and it was really kind and generous and brave <laughs> of them to you know send an engineering graduate to music school and uh, uh, it was also a challenge because uh, it's expensive to study in a, in a proper music school but mm-hmm. after the first semester uh, since i was so grateful to be there i worked so hard and the teacher saw it and they helped me with scholarships and that was the way i finished my education but i still did not know what a musician does in real life you know i was having fun you know okay let me learn more let me learn more but until i graduated i did not okay now what do i do with all of this that i have learned and then and then gradually i moved to delhi i met many lovely people uh, started playing with a lot of people started my teaching career there uh, also uh, played with karan who you know we are still connected through the goa jazz academy uh, so a lot of good things started happening but uh, it's uh, even at this point i never thought i'd become a professional musician it just became my profession mm-hmm. uh, and uh, uh, i i also faced some form of burnout so to say you know with that lifestyle and i thought okay let me explore more things that's when i thought okay let me put the context of making money through music aside do does music still find its place in my life 
so i went and i had uh, uh, a desire to volunteer too at that point in my life so i went and vol- started volunteering at this forest in oroville called sadna forest and i took my drums along with it and with no preconceptions if i wish like if i feel like playing music i'll find a way to make it happen even in this forest uh and after some time i realized okay i like playing music music can be a part of my life i don't have to be a professional musician or a full time mm-hmm. musician as people say but music certainly makes my life fuller right so music has its own space so that was that was a pivotal moment in my career when i thought okay music has its space in my life now i have to make, find a way do i want to make a livelihood out of it do i not but i also was very passionate about education right from childhood because i had incredible teachers right from like you know junior kg until even in music school i had fantastic mentors so i kind of wanted to be in that uh, uh, in that train that legacy of you know being really good educators so i uh, based on currently what i'm doing yes i'm an educator and since i enjoy uh, uh, teaching music and i know a little bit about it i use music as a tool for education so what i'm most interested in education and uh, music just happens to be uh, the the tool i use uh, and uh, in, the same thing for writing for that matter i realized okay writing makes my life fuller so i started to write and it's also coming together in a nice way now uh, so i would refrain from calling myself a full time anything i just want to embrace everything that makes my life fuller <laughs> and uh, let's see what uh, comes out of that so far no problems i'm happy with how the career is going and uh, yes a full life is what i am looking for and music is a part of it <laughs> and i'm grateful for that that's awesome that's awesome yeah um it's 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 so good to, it's always so good so overwhelming in such a good way to talk to you shrinath like i think uh, uh, anika also has has been feeling like but she's also been putting um you know because it's 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 nice since you kind of have this um connection with your with your you know creative connection with your thoughts and you have this active you know listening to yourself going on so the way you process your thoughts and the way that you express your thoughts is it's kind of like helps you know helps the other person also do the same so it's always nice and, and yeah. um yeah and i i don't have any other questions or anything is there anything you wanted to kind of talk about about the playlist about the workshop about your journey that you felt like you left out or anything uh, or about the no, goa jazz academy well uh, we are a bunch of extremely passionate educators who who just want to share what we know and hopefully sooner in your career so that you get the help that we did not need that's our motivation to start this place it's a really yeah. uh, uh, you know gorilla grassroots grounded organization as we like to call it and we have a beautiful community that's building around the idea of making music together we have jazz ensemble programs we have recitals we have started interna- interactive drum circles there's a lot of good stuff happening here and it's nice to be one of the cogs in the wheel uh, to enable this to happen and we hope that more people join us and take this movement of education forward uh, that's about the academy about the playlist i'd like to finish with one lyric that i really love out of all the songs okay so uh, this song is penned by one of my favorite lyricists his name is uh, sahir ludhiani uh, and the title of this song is main zindagi ka saath nibhata chala gaya it's a very famous song but i'd still like to say the lyrics before we leave so the lyric goes main zindagi ka saath nibhata chala gaya har fikr ko dhue mein udata chala gaya main zindagi ka saath nibhata chala gaya हर फिक्र को धुए में उड़ाता चला गया बर्बादियों का सोग मनाना फिजूल था बर्बादियों का सोग मनाना फिजूल था बर्बादियों का जश्न मनाता चला गया मैं जिंदगी का साथ निभाता चला गया जो मिल गया उसी को मुकद्दर समझ लिया जो मिल गया उसी को मुकद्दर समझ लिया जो खो गया मैं उसको भुलाता चला गया मैं जिंदगी का साथ निभाता चला गया हर फिक्र को धुए में उड़ाता चला गया द लास्ट लाइन्स विच आर माई फेवरेट गम और खुशी में फर्क ना महसूस हो जहां 
गम और खुशी में फर्क ना महसूस हो जहा मैं दिल को उस मुकाम तक लाता चला गया मैं जिंदगी का साथ निभाता चला गया और फिक्र को धुएं में उड़ाता चला गया इट्स 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 लाइक अ मंत्र टू लिव अ लाइफ इन पीस सो आई लीव यू विद दैट लिरिक please enjoy this playlist it's the link should be in goa jazz academy's bio i hope you enjoy the songs and the lyrics and if you like it please connect and share what you thought about it and thank you for so many people for sticking around and commenting and yeah. keeping this space really active really grateful for that and thanks meera yeah, thank you, for this everyone. lovely interview thank you <laughs> thank you and yeah thanks everyone for joining is quite an active comment section everyone is kind of i don't know if you saw all the comments but everyone was saying that you are a genius and you are amazing no <laughs> and things like that thank you you're too kind <laughs> all right thank you guys so much we're going to sign off and you can watch this later if you want to share it it's going to be on the page this this live session thank you so much reena okay thank you bye everyone bye meera